Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com and welcome to This Week in Prophecy. Uh, main focus this week, we're going to take a look at uh, the relationship that continues to develop and increase between Russia, Turkey, and Iran. Um, you can see we have Moscow up here to the north, we have Turkey down to the south, we have Iran down to the to the south and east of uh Moscow, Moscow, you say Moscow, I say Moscow. Caspian Sea right here, so they have a direct route um, over the Caspian Sea down into Tehran. Give you an idea how easily that works for those folks via plane. And that's something I did not include in this, but uh, Tehran has been flying a bunch of uh, big freight planes, like over 40 trips recently between Tehran and Moscow. And thinking is that it is probably drone technology that the Russians have been purchasing from the Iranians. So, and they're using that in Ukraine. So, you know, again, just another example of the developing ties between Ezekiel 38 and uh, the countries mentioned. The ancient names, of course, Gog of Magog. Uh, King James Version says Rosh, Rosh, Meshach, Tubal, prophesy against them. So you have Russia, modern day Turkey, and then of course we have Persia, ancient Persia, changed its name to Iran in the 20th century. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is, uh, this is from hotair.com, Checkmate sent me this, uh, this article. I'd seen pictures of this and some of the video of it. Uh, Russia launches Iranian satellite, um, and the Russian foreign ministry hailed this event as a, quote, important landmark in cooperation between Moscow and Tehran. Uh, while there's technically, there's nothing technically illegal about this because nobody really, quote, owns space. Uh, it's still a worrisome development. Low Earth orbit is already crowded enough. And uh, the Iranians are wanting to join the party. And, of course, this is for peaceful purposes. Iran and Russia are both claiming it's totally innocent. So don't worry about it. And, again, this is from a hotair.com. Compliments of the Associated Press. Um, Soyuz rocket lifted off 8.52 a.m. Moscow time Tuesday uh, in Kazakhstan. That's where they launch most of their stuff. So, um, <laughs> oh, they say they're mon they're monitoring climate change in their own country. Yeah, let me tell you a little secret. It's hot in Iran. I can tell you what's going on there. It's very hot. Don't need a satellite to figure that out. <laughs> but anyhow, that's that's the claim. For those of you who would like some uh, video, space.com has some video. Click on the Twitter feed. I'm going to provide a link to hotair.com. And again, this is being used for quote civilian purposes. So don't worry about it. It's all, all, all good. Civilian purposes. We're going to take a look at this, monitor the weather, weather, uh, see if we can get behind what's, what's causing all this heat in, in Iran. I would argue it's summer is causing some of it. Um, at any rate, you know, again, another example of Ezekiel's crew of Russia and modern day Iran strengthening military, uh, economic ties, and they are going into space together, which takes us to Russia and Turkey. Here we have the happy couple, Putin and Erdogan getting together. They had a little meeting in Sochi, Turkey to pay in rubles for Russian gas as demand increases. So effectively what has happened as a result of all these Western sanctions, Russia has increased sales south and to the east. So including Turkey, India's gotten into it with close to 2 billion people. I know they're shipping a lot of oil and gas energy to China as well, with them being close to 2 billion people. So you have, uh, this is a uh, Turkish president Recep Erdogan made the comment, we agreed on the rubble with or the, <laughs> it is rubble, the ruble with Putin. Uh, and that was in Sochi. Um, Erdogan, excuse me, 
delivered remarks to members of the Turkish press accompanying him on his way back from Russia. Now, the good deal was is that uh, the Akayu nuclear plant, $20 billion nuclear plant being built by Russia's uh, state-run nuclear energy firm, Rosatom, also they got funding for that. So, President highlighted the Turkish and Russian ministries working on grain shipments from Russian ports. Russia has the Mer card, local payment card in Russia, sponsored by the government. Currently, five of our banks, and I think we talked about that last week on The Watchman. That was something that had taken place. Uh, five Turkish banks are now taking the Mer card, Mir card, whatever, uh, in Turkey, and so they've acted upon this and are now going to be buying natural gas in, rub- in rubles through the Mir card, Mir card. I don't know how that's said in Russia and or Turkey. Also added, to- Turkey will hopefully attend the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the SCO. Uh, Russia is going to be involved with that to be held in Uzbekistan in September. So again, another example, Russia developing economic um, ties with and, and energy ties with Turkey. For those of you who want to go a little bit deeper, recommend uh, Kyle Bass on Twitter. He's got a brief feed, a brief feed on this as, as what this means as he sees it. He's a he's a economic researcher, uh, investor, focuses on um, specializes in all parts of the world, but really looks at China. Also, taking a look in this case uh, with what's going on with Erdogan and Turkey and doesn't trust them. And effectively, NATO shouldn't trust Turkey. Uh, Heist made ISIS one of the most well-funded radical terrorist organizations in the world. Also certain that Erdogan protects the jihadi training camps under the umbrella of the Turkish defense system. Uh, Part two will focus on the team of U.S. Green Berets embedded in Syria for the past five, six years, whose mission it was to completely eradicate ISIS from the face of the earth. Almost completed their mission when they came upon Omar Shishani. He's a Chechen just outside of Dabik. I believe that's in northern Syria, who was ISIS military's number two and one of our highest value targets. We had his burner phone number, locked his position with our drones. Instead of killing him immediately, we decided to put him on the run just to observe to observe who he would run to in a time of need. He ran straight to Turkey's head, National Intelligence Organization, spent the night at his house. Turkey is not a friend of the West and has aligned itself with the axis of authoritarians. Now, we say axis of authoritarians. They are the axis of good, self-proclaimed axis of good. Russians call themselves the axis of good. Um, Harboring fugitive terrorists and actively plotting with Russia on how it can help a war criminal move his fleet and his goods through the ports of Ukraine, through the Black Sea, Bosphorus Straits, and into the waters of the Med around to China. So, Agreeing to pay Russia rubles for oil is simply another step in cementing the relationship between Erdogan, Putin, and Xi. So just in those those three leaders, Erdogan and Putin, Ezekiel 38, Xi, that'd be Revelation 9, and they're all doing business together. And the Bible in end times says this, these are not nice people, and they're all they're all aligning themselves with each other. And those ties whether it be military, economic, energy, continue to strengthen with each passing week. Uh, So how is this affecting people um, outside of the area? And specifically, we're going to take a look at the UK. Now, these numbers, when it says 4,200 pounds in January, this will be the yearly cost of energy bills. And they have some charts uh, as to what that means now, loosely right now, one dollar is equal to one. Well, that's not true. The pound is is much stronger than uh, than what the euro is. But I, we can we can put it in terms of this. We're t- we're looking at yearly cost of what it would take to heat 
a house, energy prices. So anticipated energy prices for the winter of 22, 23, upwards of 4,000 pounds for a year. And let's just go back even two years ago to say 1,200 pounds, roughly 100 pounds a month. I mean, so we are looking at close to three times the expense of energy for a home. So, you know, for those of you guys listening, say your electrical bill is 100 bucks a month. I mean, you would be looking at, what, $350 a month? So multiply your energy bill times 3.5 on a monthly basis. That's what these people in Europe are facing. Um, and again, natural gas, you know, going back, well, just even to earlier in 2022, prices have more than doubled uh, on the futures markets in the UK which you know that's going up more, wholesale wholesale prices, EU gas, going back to 2020, you're looking at close to 10 10, uh, euro per per unit of delivery, and now that's upwards of over 200. So we're talking a 20-fold increase when it comes to wholesale prices of natural gas in Europe over the last, what, two years? I mean, it's insane what these people are playing or paying, and they're going to pay more because Russia's cut off the spigot. Russia's shipping their uh, their resources east towards China, India, and um, European countries who are not paying in rubles. Their supply's been cut off. Now the EU is kind of willing to bend bend the rules a little bit and allow companies inside the EU to purchase Russian natural gas in rubles. But again, you know, when you're talking two and a half to four times increase in price over the last year or two, and what that would mean um, to a household budget, I mean, we're going to run into some problems in a hurry across Europe when it comes to prices. And, you know, of course, they're talking cast or cost caps in um, in the UK. That never works. That's never an idea. It just makes things worse. Um, calculate the price cap on energy bills going forward. You're not going to be able to, you, you go to put a cost cap on that, you're going to make things worse. We've seen that happen here in the States with certain things. But it's different this time because they're the ones trying it and they know better. Um, just the way humans are. That's all you can say about that. But something to watch and, you know, the no end in sight. Uh, They're having a little bit of a heat wave over there and that's driving prices up. What's going to happen when things get cold and they need this stuff for for heating purposes? It's it's not going to be a good deal. Uh, So, again, you know, we're looking at inflation over time. Also, we're going to take a look at uh, this happened earlier this week. uh, I think over the weekend, this may have happened this morning. Democrat Senator Ed Markey leads a con- congressional delegation to Taiwan less than two weeks after Pelosi's controversial trip there amid, amid rising tensions with China. A group of five U.S. lawmakers made a surprise stop in Taiwan on Sunday, so that would be this morning through Asia. Um, Democrat Senator Ed Markey, Democrat Representatives Alan Lowenthal, John Garamendi, Don Beyer, and American Samoa GOP delegate Amua Amata. We got a little bipartisanship going on there, even though it is American Samoa. So, nonetheless, I'm sure this will irritate China. And keep in mind, China most likely is Revelation 9's 200 million man army that I think ends up taking out a third of the planet, planet's population with whatever it is they decide to do. I suspect nuclear weapons and some other stuff will be involved with that. But time will tell. It is. It does say what it says as far as a 200 million man army will cause a lot of destruction to the rest of the planet. You only really got a couple of options there. When looking at Revelation 9, I believe it starts in verse 16. Uh, what? China can do that and India can do that. And right now it would appear China appears to be the, the aggressor and trending toward being that that nation that would be able to do that. So, 
you know, again, and just looking at the theme of inflation, rising interest rates. I know there's a lot of scuttle. What uh, mortgage rates here in the United States went over six percent this week, and you know, not that long ago, rates were, gosh, two and a half to three percent. I know in early April, three and a quarter, and here we are, mid-August, and we're up over six or right at six. How would you like to be in Argentina? Protests in Argentina. This is from Wall Street Silver on Twitter, and I've seen this in different articles uh, around the internet. Protests in Argentina after the country's central bank raised its main interest or its main rate of interest to 69.5% to combat inflation rates above 70%. So they raised their interest rates to 70 or to 69.5%. And we're grumbling about mortgage rates at 6%. Government is also cutting subsidies for energy and other social benefits. Well, guess what? People are upset and they've taken to the streets uh, in Argentina. And this was August 11. This was three days ago. I I suspect the town's Mendoza. I should have probably bothered to look that up. But anyhow, this is a, these things are global phenomena and the list of, of countries experiencing inflation year over year at 30% or more continues to grow on a weekly basis. I think a couple weeks ago it was around 10 or 12. And this is a theme, you know, and as the stronger the dollar gets, the more interest rates go up in the United States. A lot of this debt around the world is financed in dollars. And, you know, it's coming home to roost. We gave all this free money out. Oh, it's free money, free money. Take it, take it, take it. Don't worry about it. Pay us back whenever. No interest. Well, guess what? Interest is starting to pop. United States is starting to demand payment. And the cost to service that debt has increased. Gee whiz. Three and fourfold in some cases, if not more. When when you figure in, uh, that's just on the interest rate side, let alone the compounding effect of the strength of the dollar against these weaker and weaker currencies around the planet, which of course is creating inflation. So on a global scale and it continues to grow. So appreciate you guys taking the time to follow today and uh, please feel free to share with others at paulthepoke.com and uh, we'll get back with you. We're getting kind of breaking news. We got, uh, we got fall feast coming up. Going to start getting some things out next week for Teshuva. That's the 40 day period where the idea is to repent and return to God Seek God, head your back, turn to God. It's time to turn your face toward God with the ultimate goal being face-to-face with God on the Day of Atonement, the second fall feast. So appreciate you guys following along. Wish everybody the best. Take care. Bye.